Hello! Today we are taking a look at the charming lady that stole the heart and wallet of many captains, Elysia, also known as Miss Pink Elf. These are 7 things about Elysia you didn't know. <laughs> As many of you know, the Elysian Realm is a virtual space created by Mobius and founded by Eden. That means that the people there are just simulations based on the minds of the original 13 Flame Chasers. That includes Elysia too. We know that some of them like Sakura and Eden died in the previous era and that others managed to awaken in the new world tasked with enforcing Dr. May projects like Project Amber and Project Valuka. But what happened to Elysia? Did she manage to come to the new era with Kevin, Sue and Hua? Unfortunately, if you pay close attention to the lore of the Elysian realm, it is implied that Elysia died sometimes between the 12th Hersher and the 14th. So yeah, it's highly unlikely to see Ellie outside the Elysian realm unless Honkai plans to surprise us with some big revelations and turnarounds. This is a misconception I saw many people have, even though it is explained pretty early in the Elysian realm. Her elf-like years are a side effect of the fusion process to become a mantis. It's the same as Kevin's low body temperature, Sakura's fox ears and Mobius' snake-like futures. Elysia was the second one to become a mantis after Kevin, and the early process of fusing with Honkai DNA had some pretty unusual side effects. Also, the Honkai beast Elysia fused with was a Vipralopa class Honkai beast called Mahesvara. The Vipralopa class is something we do not hear about in the current era, so we can assume that it's a class of Honkai beasts that existed only in the previous era. In terms of strength, it should be somewhere near an Emperor class or maybe a little bit stronger, but weaker than a Judgment class beast. We know that because Judgment class Honkai beasts did not exist in the previous era, the first one being Chiyo as a result of the Honkai adapting to Fuhua, Fushi and Nuwa enacting Project Ember and giving humanity knowledge they were not supposed to have at that time. Anyway, Mahesvara in Buddhism is referred to as the ruler of all three realms of Samsara, which is the very concept of karmic depth, reincarnation and cyclicity. Mahesvara is also tasked with the duty of giving spiritual knowledge, which is kinda in line with Elysia's attitude and view on things. In Hinduism, Mahesvara is another name for Shiva, which is one of the principal deities. So yeah, based on just the name of the Honkai beast, we can say that it was a pretty powerful one. If I were you, I would pull for that bow, only not to get on Elysia's bad side. During some dialogue between Elysia and Mobius that happens right amid the previous era second eruption, we can see that Elysia and Mobius are two of the longest active members of Fire Moth. And that makes sense since we know that Mobius is the one responsible for recruiting Dr. May, and Elysia seems somehow involved in one way or another in the recruitment of the majority of the other members. After the disaster that was the attack of the 11th Hersher, the 13 mantises that survived were all brought under a single group to have a better chance to fight against the Honkai and as a last line of defense for humanity. Even though each of the flame chasers had a very different personality, we learn from Fuhua that Elysia herself managed to bring all of them together. This only speaks volumes about her intelligence and the ability to understand how each person thinks and works. As we can see in her dialogues, when she recruited some of the members, Elysia knew exactly what to tell them in order to make them join. She's also the one that chose the rankings for the group. Apparently, the number each member was assigned seems to be based on Elysia's whim at that time. 
Fuhua was assigned number 12 because she was the youngest and Elysia didn't want her to be involved in politics. Mobius was 10 because Elysia wanted to limit her influence. And then we have cases like Sue, who was given number 7 just because it would fit him. Even if some of the rankings seemed to not make any sense, nobody opposed Elysia's choices and accepted their ranks. She even chose to put herself second to Kevin because she thought that the position of the second in command is much more fitting for her and didn't want to shoulder the responsibilities of a leader. In terms of strength, we know that she and Kevin were the only ones who were able to defeat Kalpas in battle, so it's safe to assume that they were the strongest flame chasers in terms of power. Elysia mentions multiple times that she is weaker than Kevin, but Mobius accuses her of holding back, a fact noticed also by Mei when she fought her in the Elysian realm. Elysia says that this is not true and that she is indeed weaker than Kevin, at least temporarily. It is speculated that she is heavily tied with the lost continent of Mu. When introducing herself, she says that her name means paradise in Mu's language. She also seems very knowledgeable about the place and she even harvests Senka tree fruits which she says that were very popular back in Mu. The continent of Mu was threatened to be destroyed completely by the previous era, Hersher of Earth, which created a giant black hole to swallow it whole, but before that happened, a scientist named Einstein opened a portal to the Sea of Quanta and Mu along with its people became one of the many bubble universes floating in the sea. The continent of Mu from the game is based on the lost continent of Mu, which is a mass of land that was supposedly located in the Pacific and was submerged underwater. You may also know it as Atlantis. For many years, the idea of a lost continent was theorized and polarized by many, but its existence was deemed impossible by many geologists. So Mu's existence in the real world has no factual basis. Unless, you know, maybe Mihoyo knows something that we don't. Mobius notes in one of her documents with data gathered while observing Elysia that the position of her leg ring is based on the days of the week and that she is constantly changing her hairstyle without a certain pattern. While reading this, Elysia is very happy that Mobius took such a big interest in her and noticed all these things and says that in actuality she changes her hairstyle based on the weather. Which makes sense. Setting aside the mystery of Elysia's identity, the fact that nobody knows anything about her past and that she keeps many things hidden from the others, it is heavily implied that Elysia betrays humanity at some point after the incident with the 12th Hersher. Mobius calls her a traitor. Later, Kevin confirms that indeed Elysia betrayed them and Dr. May suspects that she's hiding something very important. During a meeting with the flame chasers, she asked them to remember how they first meet Elysia. This may sound very strange for many people, since she is always portrayed as this friendly and talkative girl that, quoting Eden, loves everyone. Even in the description of her crystalline rose, it says the following. She loved humans deeply, but what she loved wasn't any individual, but humans as a species. Yes, the girl loved humans till the very end. No matter if they were beautiful or ugly, good or evil or right or wrong, that love never change and will never change. As beautiful as a rose and as eternal as a crystal. Then I ask you, why would she turn against humanity? And the answer is simple, because of love. She betrayed humanity because she wanted to unite them, to give them a last glimpse of hope and a minuscule chance to win the war against the Honkai. After the 12th Hersher was sealed, every human city was already destroyed and humanity was more divided than ever, already accepting the fact that they lost the war against the Honkai. 
In a dialogue with Prometheus, a super AI created by Dr. May in order to predict the war against the Honkai, Alicia asks what would take for humanity to unite again since they stand no chance of survival against the Honkai right now. The answer that the AI gave was that in order for humanity to unite again and have a chance at victory, they need a threat more dangerous and more destructive than a Hersh. To which Alicia responds, it's pretty cool for the main character of a story to become an absolutely charming villain, right? What this dialogue implies is that in order for humanity to be united again, they need to face a new threat, one more dangerous than the Honkai, one that will force them to act together again. And that threat, ladies and gentlemen, is none other than Elysia herself. Throughout the Elysian Ram story, we see Elysia always concerned with the unity of the group and the humanity in general. She is someone who loves human deeply and wants the best for everyone. She is the one that cares the most and if the only way to save everyone is for her to become the villain, she will gladly do it because this is a form of love that only she could offer. Elysian Realm is still an ongoing story and we have to wait to know more about what really happened. But regardless, Elysia's story shapes up to be a really tragic one. A beautiful one, but tragic nonetheless. We don't know yet how she will become the villain. Is she the 13th Hersher? I mean, she could be. All we can do now is wait and hope that Mihoyo will give us more answers. I'm very hyped to know more about Elysia and I hope this video helped you learn a thing or two about her that you didn't know. Thank you very much for watching and I wish you all a great day. Don't forget to subscribe and see you next time.